Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week um, I'm going to be doing some soft pastel landscape uh, painting. I'm never sure if it's painting or drawing um, because it's a dry medium. Sometimes people may think of it as drawing, but it is more like painting. So I'm going to call it painting. I'm going to say some soft pastel landscape painting. I'm using mainly Schmincke soft pastels. I do like the Schmincke pastels. But I'll also be adding in a, a little bit of charcoal, some of that Durant XL charcoal blocks um, on top of the soft pastels. I also this week did some charcoal landscapes, sort of the old fashioned way, just using willow charcoal on some white paper. It was kind of Bristol board. I didn't record those, but I will show them at the end of the video. And there's four of those drawings. This week I wanted to talk about something that was a bit more lighthearted. I feel as though the last few videos have been slightly heavier subjects. So just something that's not serious at all, just lighthearted. I noticed quite a few YouTube channels doing these sort of ranking videos. And maybe they rank their favorite foods or places or movies or something. There's some art channels also do it and they talk about different art mediums. So I thought I would give it a go and uh, just talk about ranking art mediums. Now this is entirely subjective and entirely my opinion. I don't want anybody to be offended if I say I don't like this medium, but it's your favorite. It, it is just my opinion. Uh, it, it doesn't mean anything uh, to anybody other than me, that is. So I'm going to have four categories. The top one, the materials that I love using the most. The second one of the materials that I would love to love, but actually I struggle with. The third one, materials, mediums that I, I don't like. Um, I'm not going to uh, try and sugarcoat it. I just don't like them. And then the, the fourth category, maybe a medium that I haven't really used, but maybe I would like to try and use in the future. Okay, so the top one, the ones that I like, well, first one I'd have to say is watercolor. So I got into watercolor for the first time just after I got back into art after a very long break. By long break, I mean like close to 20 years. I like watercolor because I like the freshness and the brightness of the colors that you can get. Also, especially when you, you paint wet in wet, which I do a lot, you can create effects in watercolor that you cannot, I don't think anyway, you can create in any other medium. Some of those wet in wet effects are really unique to watercolor painting. And I like that sort of uniqueness and difference. My other top favorite would be some of the dry media, so charcoal especially, including those Derwent XL blocks that I keep talking about, that I'm sort of obsessed with. Um, I like the expressiveness of those dry media, like charcoal. They're very simple media and very expressive. And they work with lots of different types of paper and things. So I do like charcoal, whether it's the compressed charcoal or just the willow charcoal. If we go down, I should say these are the four charcoal drawings that I did. And I was trying to get back to just basics, just willow charcoal on white paper. No colors, just very basic. The second category down then was materials that I would love to love, uh, but materials that really I've struggled with so far. And top of that list would be uh, soft pastels. I love the idea of soft pastels. I love the sort of immediacy, the fact that you're drawing with them or painting or whatever it is, and it's direct. There's no brushes involved. There's no other medium like water or oil or anything. You're just, you pick up the pastel, which is almost just pure pigment, a little bit of binder, and you start making marks on the paper. It's very direct. Um, and very expressive and I think they're marvelous. However, I've really struggled with soft pastels to get 
the sort of effect that I want with them. And maybe it's partly because I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted from them. Never mind how to actually achieve that. But it's a work in progress and I'm, I'm getting closer to where I want to be. And part of that is because I'm now using just sketchbook paper rather than the sort of bespoke pastel paper, the coated pastel papers. Those coated pastel papers allow me to build up lots of layers. And that was part of the problem, actually. I was overworking a lot of the, the paintings that I was doing. Getting back to more basic sketchbook type paper, I can't build up layers. I can build up maybe two at the most. So I'm more limited, but also then I'm less likely to overwork the painting, I think. Anyway, that's the, the idea that I'm working on. And that's, as I say, it's a work in progress. The third group are mediums that I don't like using. And there's only one really, and it's oil paint. Now I know a lot of people love oil paint. A lot of the artists that I love from the past, they all used primarily oil paint. Oil paint is fantastic in the, the many different techniques that you can use with oil paint. Wet in wet, um, wet on dry, dry brush, work in pastel, all these different things that you can do with oil paint. Again, it's a very unique medium and very versatile and you can blend things the way you can't with other like acrylic, for example. The thing that puts me off oil paint is, well, there's a few things, but first of all, working with oil paint reminds me of chemistry classes in school. I really didn't enjoy chemistry classes. I, I didn't like it at all. And there's something about oil paint just reminds me of, it's the smells, the dangerous chemicals, the warning signs on bottles and things. All these things just put me off using oil paint. As I, say, I know a lot of people love it. And that's, I understand that. I understand the versatility and the uniqueness of oil paint. It's just not for me. If we then drop down in the fourth category, this is one that there's one medium that I haven't really used, but I would like to maybe have a go to try and use it uh, in the future. And that's oil pastels. So part of the thing that appeals to me is the story of how oil pastels um, sort of came into being. I don't know if this story is true, but the story I heard was one day in the Sennelier shop, um, a crazy artist came in waving his arms around and saying that he wanted, he wanted a medium, a bright colored medium that he could use on paper or wood or canvas, dif different types of materials. And that artist was Pablo Picasso. And Sennelier did create oil pastels based on this idea of a, a medium that had really bright, vibrant colors, but also you could use on different surfaces. I've seen lots of art created by soft pas uh, oil pastels. Uh, some of it I like, some of it I don't, but it's definitely something I would like to experiment with and try. Um, Sennelier do still make oil pastels and they're probably one of the most expensive oil pastels that you can buy. There are cheaper ones out there. Um, and oil pastels also include really the cheap crayons that a lot of us maybe used when we were children, um, maybe drawing on the walls or something like this. And certainly I remember from what I would call primary school, many people might call it elementary school. When you were a very young child, you had these art classes, if you like, and very often involved um, the cheap crayons, the sort of waxy crayons. And they're, I suppose, a kind of oil pastel. Not as fancy, but basically the same thing. Anyway, it's something I would like to try in the future. Um, no big plans or anything, but if I have a chance, I will try them. Okay, so as I say, in nothing serious about this video, completely just my own subjective opinions. Um, some of the materials I like working with, the oil paint that I don't, and the oil pastels that I would like to try at some point in the future. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in next week's video.